Okay, so green, black, driven zombies. So the core of this deck is mono, mono black. There is a mono black zombie deck that's been up on my website uh, almost since the very inception of the format. I think this archetype is very reasonable as a whole. It's got some relatively aggressive draws on the back of things like Death Baron and Lord of the Accursed. And then it gets to play Thought Seize and Fatal Push as some of the best interaction in this format. The thing that this build is doing that makes it Driven Zombies is splashing for Driven to Despair here. So the front half of Driven says, Until end of turn, creatures you control gain Trample when they deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. And the back half of Despair, which you get to play from your graveyard as an Aftermath card, says, Until end of turn, creatures you control gain Menace and when this deals combat damage to a player, that player discards a card. So basically, we're leveraging Driven to Despair as a form of both evasion and an additional way to generate card advantage in our archetype. Um, because we're leveraging some green mana for these cards, there are a number of green things in the sideboard I think are mostly reasonable. I'm a little bit suspect that Scavenging Ooze is a good inclusion in this build just because we only have 10 green sources and this gen card often requires a few green mana to be useful, but let's dive on into some matches here with this one and see how it goes. Yeah, I agree. I think... The the floor on an aggressive deck that gets to play Thoughtseize is, like, relatively high. Like, if you have draws that can, like, kill people by turns four to five and you get to play Thoughtseize and Fatal Push, it's hard for your deck to be too terrible. Okay. Yeah, we did. We just got done playing a set with the inverter deck. Um, it felt it felt obnoxious. I think I think it's better than Splinter Twin. I think it's slightly slower in some situations, but for the most part, it's also. Well, that's an Elspeth Conqueror's death. For the most part, in addition to being slower, it's also much harder to interact with for most decks. Looks like the opponent's playing a different Splinter Twin deck here. I think I'm just drawing. Yeah, it has better interaction, it's more resilient. Old old twin and modern used to have to play Remand. Remand hasn't been a good magic card in a very long time. Thought Seize, however, is a multi-format all-star for a reason. Land is great here, because it lets me play Lord of the Accursed and then kill Gideon of the Trials here. Before that can start beating us down. How would Modern compare to Pioneer? I don't know, it's pretty arbitrary. It's, some, it's somewhere in the middle. I think I just pass here. I think I want to draw one more card. They have Conqueror's Death and three cards I don't know here. Crypt, Crypt Breaker is very, very good. Oh, this gets any planes. That's so good.
So I'll probably shoot a Crypt Breaker. That's pretty good. All right, and then I think I just Dark Salvation here. Target player creates zombies, then put minus counters on target creature. Kill you. Let me get to smack them for four here with the Relentless Dead. So, you don't have to make zombie tokens with that. For it to kill something, it counts your zombies that are already in play just fine. And then, these are, these are menacing, so they can't get blocked by the 2-2. Next turn, I get to play Lord of the Accursed and just smash into them for a whole bunch. Huh. So I'm not attacking with these anyways. So let's start by drawing and see what we find. Relatively efficient beatdowns here. They hit the land, they can conquer his death, my lord of the accursed here. But otherwise, that's quite slow. Need to hit it this turn. And even if they hit that this turn, I still have a lot of power in play. Mm, yeah, I should probably wait till post combat to play it. You're correct. Noxious Grass probably okay against the Mono White deck. I feel like this is probably not a Driven to Despair matchup. They have Stasis Snare on top of Walking Ballista. Fatal Push is probably fine. This is probably not a Colossus matchup. You could just want a bunch of interaction. How is Inverter? Very powerful. Super obnoxious. Well, I mean, I can't double thought seize on two. Both my lands are tapped. This hand's like certainly a keep with untapped lands, right? I think, I think it's still a keep with tapped lands. It's close though. I wouldn't fault someone for throwing this back. Their deck seems like it could be kind of aggressive. We don't know exactly what they're doing. And there's a swamp on top of our deck. This hand is phenomenal. Yeah, I don't know the grasp is super good here. It's like a doom blade.
take their Walking Bluster out. Walking Bluster is actually just like quite good naturally against our deck. Their hand's not super aggressive here, so we're probably in an okay spot. Hoping to just draw a third land in general next turn. You'll burn, Kyle. Hopefully, hopefully they get the uh, the Iowa Caucus nonsense sorted out before I die of old age. That would be that would be ideal. Apparently, for people that don't know what I'm referring to when I say Iowa caucus nonsense, apparently they're having some issues with the software they use for the reporting. Yeah, Bernie, the reason why Bernie's a good candidate to, to support and the reason why lots of people in politics are worried about him is because Bernie does a good job to challenge the status quo. Nah, it's probably just incompetence. You ever, you ever watched a boomer try and work some technology? Come on now. Never, never attribute to malice. Uh, that is that is incorrect, Tumos. So if they don't have another creature here and they attack with both, I get to go block Daxos, kill the knight, and then trade. I believe you, Tumos, that that's a something that was read online but it's also not correct. So this has toughness equal to the devotion to white. So we get to go ahead and knock it down to a 2-2 and then trade off here. Owl's a little scary. I'm down to eight already, so she just kills me in three turns in the air. I'm nowhere near dealing lethal. I think we're just dead. Like they attempt me down to five and then play a big ballista here. I don't know. I don't think it's purely like as someone who like, we'll never vote for Bloomberg in the primary. I don't think it's strictly nonsense to adjust to let someone who's self-funding their campaign purely into the into the debate. Like, I think if you go, if you drive purely based on poll numbers, I think that's a fine metric to drive based on. Or poll numbers or individual donations or something like that. Like, having having multiple lanes for people to get in seems fine. Yeah, that's how that's how most information gets spread on Facebook, Tumos. Read read a headline, headline excluded some key detail that was included in the actual article, etc. Alright, do we get greedy and bottom a land here, or do I just bottom a Lord of the Accursed? Should we let the greed consume us, chat? Mr. Silicon, thank you for the 37 months. I appreciate that. That's a long time. I kind of like the greed too. Like we get to go one, two regardless. And like if we miss our land on three, I could fire up Mutavault and smack them.
that that's the right headspace to be in Justin Mack. And honestly, I think that's the biggest problem with like in a perfect world, I think a lot of these things that are issues like should be things that like both sides want to be addressing because like a lot of Americans agree with things like the current healthcare system is messed up and stuff like that. But like, it's okay to disagree on the how we get there to fix these things that are like hurting lots of people but to just like blatantly ignore them is nonsense. Or discuss the, you wanna discuss the speed at which some of these things you think should happen, sure. But to just like not make them happen is not a good scene. All right, untapped land, one time dealer, rip. Silly, silly one twos. Probably gonna trade a one two for my two two here. You know, I'm probably supposed to attack. Yeah, I, I'm supposed to attack with these as well. This is this is a mistake. I missed two points of damage. This was this was a mistake on my part. I should have attacked with these as well. If they bounce off of these, I get through for two here. Oh yeah, this one can't attack. Never mind. Yeah, I, I should have. I pr should have probably shipped with this. Less, less of a big deal. Still, still not ideal, but less of a big deal. I can't have land, please. Sick. They would like to trade their knight for my 2-3. That's acceptable. They do not. Wonder if they're going to have, like, a stasis snare here for my Lord of the Accursed or some kind of removal spell. Baffling end, sure. Let's start with Thoughtsies. I will take your last spell. And then we can Dark Salvation kill this. Now, they're out of gas in their hand, but it's worth noting that they have two cards on board here in these clues. Yeah, three three color aggro decks are a tough sell, Wargy. Especially when you're trying to play like green drop on one, red black spell on two. Like you have to have a shock land on one. They have a stasis snare. This could be block plus snare, my lord. Nope, just jump in, deal. Wonder if they're playing sweepers. Nope. Okie dokie. Onwards, upwards, backwards, forwards. Oh, does double Urborg disqualify this hand? Is it crazy to mulligan this hand because of double Urborg? I almost feel like this deck should not have two Urborgs in it. I know we have two Mutavolts, but it is a good two lander. Yeah, I guess that's fair.
That's fair. Okay. Splinter Twin, Splinter Twin, as far as the eye can see. This is a new match, yep. They're like Tarmo Twin. They just have a they have a beat down backup plan. Let's see if they drew a land here. If this is coming into play tapped. Man, their hand is good. Thanks for 17 months, Boshek. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of there's a lot of different things to keep track of these days. Hmm. Apocalypse. Thanks for the third of a year. Kind of feel dead. Is it just stasis snare? Probably Gideon. Gideon's like a soft removal spell that like also eventually kills me. I assume our Lord's about to get snared. Corn chips. Thanks for 18 months. Welcome back. It'll be, I'm interested to see how, how historic shapes up. Cur currently, interest in historic content is kind of at an all-time low. I think we, we posted four standard decks and one historic deck yesterday. And as of this morning, the historic deck had half as many views on YouTube as the least watched standard video. So every, every standard video had 2x or, or more, in some cases, 5x, the views of the historic deck. I guess I'm just cycling this driven. Part of, part of me wonders, too, if, like, this splash is worth it. Like, I'm not, I'm not really sure that this effect is particularly powerful against a lot of the decks that are being played right now. Yeah, and I mean, like, uh, honestly, like, if they can manage to not mess up the format, which is which is a big if, I think. Um, I do, I do think Magic's good standard formats are the some of the best Magic has to offer. Like this current standard format is super enjoyable. Like, de definitely, my at this current snapshot in time, standard is the format I'm enjoying the most. And the number number of deck submissions for specifically standard are definitely mirroring that other people are enjoying it a lot as well.
Yeah, it was it was the same number that was calling for a second time, and it was a local number. So I wanted to pick it up just in case it was like an emergency with one of the kids or Christy. So I sent them I sent them to voicemail the first time. And then they called back again, so I just wanted to make sure it was it was the wrong number. Most most phone calls I get are wrong numbers. I'm a millennial, I don't really call people on the phone. My phone, my phone is for sending, sending instant messages and uh, sending instant messages and playing Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> those are those are the things my cell phone does these days. Phone calls scare me. What? It's like why? The worst is when like you message somebody and they respond with, "Can you call me?" And I just want to be like, "Well, what do you want to talk about?" What is it? Why can't this phone call be an email? Please, please make your case for why you feel this phone call can't be an email. This is a strong start for us. They did nothing and we're going to get to play a Lord next turn and beat them down. Getting a baffling end burned before we deploy the Lord feels good. That's funny, my kids, um, we do we do video calls so often, like like with their with my mother in law, they often video call. And uh I don't think they really know what a traditional phone call is. Like, when I occasionally call my grandfather, they get really confused that they can't see him on the phone when I'm talking to him. Like, what do you, what do you mean we can't see him? It's just, it's just a voice. Hey, look, chat, we drew a 3-3 dinosaur. Those that don't understand that reference, when Baffling End dies, we get a 3 3. Sell you, sell you on raid. Um, it's a grindy team building game. Reminds me, reminds me, reminds me of a mix of playing games like Diablo 2 when I was a child grinding for gear combined with Pokemon. The, the Pokemon uh, video game, not the Pokemon card game. Man, they're about to settle my wreckage, huh? It might be right to only attack with two things there, honestly. I don't know. I've got I've got the reaver to remake the zombie tokens. So it's like not too big of a deal. How how reasonable is it to as a free to play title? Probably fine. I've given them dollars and it's still pretty grindy. Like I said, if you don't enjoy like grinding levels for gear or like things like that, like traditional RPG style stuff, you're not gonna enjoy it. Even even if you spend money on it. I had I had low expectations, it exceeded them. It's a good it's a good idle time wasting game. If you do if you do install it, I don't have a official sponsored code, but some of the other subs we've coordinated putting their referral links in here cuz you get individual referral codes where like players get extra in-game stuff. So if you are going to give it a try based on my based on my recommendation, use one of the Hoaglandia referral codes there so someone else in the community gets a bonus in-game. Uh, 
Uh, you cannot ultimate price artifact stuff. We played green, white, enchantments and pioneer with Heliod, combo, and Calyx. We've not. There is a copy of that in the deck queue, though. This game is like, we're so close, but like this Gideon and then the Heliod with the castle here might, uh, might make it slip away from us. Can we bump that? I'll make a note. In the, in the future, please put the name of the deck you'd like to bump in the bump. It makes my logging easier. I don't have to make a note midstream. Oh, they're just life linking this. That's brutal. Really need to draw a Lord next turn so I can kill this Gideon. Raid does not have visual customization, so there's lots of gear combinations you can grind for and put on your stuff, but the physical appearance of your character is just dictated by which character it is. That's a good one. Yeah, I agree. The characters do look good, but you can't customize them. I think I just passed here and I'm going to draw a card with Crypt Breaker. They're going to make a 1-1 one -one here, so I want to be able to block their 1-1 one -one with my Reaver. So I'm not drawing right away. Yep. Who is this? That's my friend Matt Bamonte. He used to be around the stream more when I streamed in the evenings mostly, but he has a day job. So since I started streaming full time, he hasn't really been around. This is such a good draw in a long game like this. I'd like to kill your thing and make some friends. Oh, that's true too. Yeah, he does uh, live commentary for the NRG series, which is one of our sponsors. Does does good stuff there. Get ya. It look, it looked like we were shocking just to activate this. Didn't Matt own a game store? He worked for one of the game stores in the town where we lived for a little while. Yep. Well, we're not playing around a second settle the wreckage, so... We're going to attempt to kill them next turn. Does anybody remember what game this is in this match? We've played against White Devotion twice. Is this game two of this? Forget if this is game two or game three. Oh, they made a Gideon emblem. That's annoying. 
Fatal push is great. Fatal push is lethal, right? So Gideon, Gideon Emblem says they can't, Gideon Emblem says they can't lose the game as long as they control Gideon. So they'll make a token here. We'll push the token before, before it blocks. I am, I am, I am not just implying it. I am saying it out, right? Yeah, we were already sideboarded. All right, so now we're going to game three. Game, game the third. Could you not check the game log? Maybe I could back scroll. Joined the game. No, it doesn't say what game it is at the top of the log here. The Death Baron art is very good. You're not wrong. The sand's great. One, two, three. It's just zombum entry. What could it be? The sand is great. Keep it stuff. Something like that. Anna Fenza, eh? Okay, pick up. All right, so now the question is, I think I play Relentless Dead, and then next turn we can Thought Seize plus Reaver. It might be right to Thought Seize before they can play a three drop, but I really kind of just want to be mana efficient. All right, are we killing them before they get to Elspeth? That's the that's the real question, chat. Can we kill them before six? I feel like the answer to that question might be yes. I don't know. They have they have idyllic to like pump something up next turn. I'm gonna take the Elspeth. Since I elected to go slow, I'm just not going to attack here. I'm going to play the Reaver and then play the Lord of the Accursed next turn. Hey, Ski King. Thank you for the five months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Found a Heliod. Yeah, this is this is the other side of it though. Like the owl lets them curve here, and like I kind of can't beat Heliod, right? He says before he draws thought sees. Obs Obs should have taken the owl. Because if I'd have taken the owl, we could have thought sees the Elspeth. And they just wouldn't have an owl in play. Hopefully they pay baffling end here so that way we can get Lord of the Accursed down next turn and not worry about it dying. Yeah, they didn't 
go for it. Just have to jam. Unfortunately, we're losing this race. Maybe they get a little aggressive here and like natural slate giving us a 3-3 three, three at instant speed can maybe get us out of it. What's our best draw? Like Dark Salvation here? Removal spell? Any removal spell is pretty good. Lord. Lord would be pretty good. He's got two thumbs and concedes to settle the wreckage. This guy right here. This is a hit for eight down to four. Okay. This puts us, puts us in a spot where removal spell or Lord could potentially deal, deal, push through lethal next turn. Do I attack here? I feel like the answer is no. That's unfortunate. Dead, I think we're dead. I think we beat that one. Life, life links in this turn. All right, so we're one and one. We beat White Heliod Devotion. We lost to White Heliod Devotion. Haven't played against Blue Black Converter yet. So far, four of the seven matches we've played against today have been against Splinter Twin decks. Two card, two card instant kill your decks. This hand's like not stellar with four lands in it, but if I like take this Overgrown Tomb or like take a castle and get rid of it, this is like a good six. So I think I keep this.
Yeah, Stasis Snare is seeing play because it's instant speed removal that's double devotion for Helion. The previous the deck that our previous opponent was playing is reasonable because it's a deck that just like kills you through honest means while also having a backdoor, backdoor splinter twin you effectively. Hey, extras. Thank you for the 22 months and the absurd tier three at that. Welcome back. Very been a good one. Traverse. Okay, so uh, Larson won with Solchai Traverse over the weekend, right? Ooh, that's a good draw. So maybe this is a matchup where I'm excited to see this matchup because so far the two more aggressive decks we played against, Driven to Despair, hasn't been good. So this is a matchup where Larson, it was Larson, right? Yo, Larson on the thing. Oh, this is Reed. Is he streaming too? You can probably watch this one from both sides. Yeah, it looks like Reed's streaming as well. So if you want to watch this match play out from both sides, you can uh, fire up uh, Reed Duke's channel as well. So we'll lead on Thoughtseize here. And then we did draw this Lord, but I think I would rather Thoughtseize plus Driven this turn and get a little bit of card advantage going. Dubs, Fatal Push. They only have single black, though, so it's not too big of a deal. I think I'm going to take their Scavenging Ooze. As always, remember, do not let don't do not share information about cards Reed has in his hand that we don't know. Obviously, we can discuss the cards that we do know. So I assume something's going to get Abrupt Decay or Fatal Pushed here. Wouldn't be too surprised to see Decay happen just because it's more resource efficient. They also might want to prioritize holding the Decay for a threat like a Lord. So they have Push Push, Nissa, Seder flips over, they took the Overgrown Tomb, oh, I accidentally exited out. So we'll lead on this. Pump up the jam a little bit here. Probably see Dread Wanderer get fatal pushed. Mm. I suppose we could see them chump block and then push my Lord potentially. I think I still have to attack here. Thanks for the half of your reclaimer. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Interesting to see the Wanderer eat it there. So they have Push, Nissa, two cards I don't know. Courser is an excellent draw. Ooh, speaking of excellent draws. So this gives the squad menace and then a second lord here means we can attack this lord into their two creatures cleanly i 
Hey, Alkahide, thank you for the sub gifty. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. So I expect we'll see one of our things get fatal pushed. We might see another get double blocked. But that means my lords live, and this lord can activate to give menace every turn, which is nice. Okay, so they have Nyssa plus Grizzly Salvage in their hand. They found Uro. They missed a land though, so that's a big deal. So their hand right now is Uro Nyssa. I'm watching on YouTube for a year or so and it seemed like it was time to support. Well, thanks for keeping me around, Hadel. I appreciate that. Crypt Breaker is not the worst. Oh, and then I can bring Dread Wanderer back. Yeah, that's great. I'll just say I can draw a card for another threat, but we just like have a threat in the bin. Okay, and then we get to attack for six here. They block one, they go to three. And, like, even if they have land Nissa next turn, Lord of the Accursed giving menace means that we're good to go. I am accepting standard deck submissions. Yep. Playing a ton of standard. It's definitely my favorite format right now. So we're not, we're not doing standard today, but we'll be doing standard every other day this week. Whole, whole lot of it. Whole lot of standard going on. Do, 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 do. So they get to escape an Uro out of their bin, which lets them gain four up to six. Because it's going to put a land into play, which gains a life with Corsair. But they're still, they're still dead on board, right? We activate Lord of the Accursed to give everything menace. They're also just like dead to an attack with all. Their hand is Uro Nissa Corsair. Scavenging use seems very good here. Um, this is colorless creatures, so that's not very useful. Uh, Fetal push doesn't seem particularly good. Noxious grass seems great. Need one more trim here. Block block buttons are wonderful, Chef Seth. Peak peak social media usage. Block blocking and muting is is therapeutic. This might be wrong. I don't know. I'm bringing in other two, so I kind of think that's the one I want to trim. I, I have no idea, Time Lord. It was good. It was good in that last game. I don't know if there's enough grindy mid range decks in the format to make Driven to Despair worthwhile. I think Black Zombies, like the one we have up on my website, is a very reasonable deck in the format in general. I don't know that the Green Splash is necessarily ideal. Yep. Yeah, if you if your response to someone is on the nasty side, it's generally better to just delete it and block them. Huh. Maybe I'm supposed to 
Crit Breaker on one since I drew it, because I could Crit Breaker into Reaver, Reaver draw a card. It's a little bit worse against Beast of Spot Removal, though. Like, like, this is a good, this is a good example. Like, these, like, people like this are just very silly. Two days ago, you said you thought the combo was fine for the I'm curious what caused you to change my mind. My actual tweet says, after, I don't know if it's too powerful or powerful, but after playing with slash against it some more, gee, what do you think caused me to change my mind, chat? What do you, what do you think caused me to change my mind? What do you, what do you think caused me to change my mind? Just like. And this, and this person just like saying some nonsense as well. Just, you know. Just, just block people. Blocking, blocking people is wonderful. Life is too short. Hey, thanks for the 22 months, Jam Can, for the tier two at that. Hope your recovery is swift. Yeah, the the whole gotcha nature where like people are never people are never happy. Like, oh, oh, you changed your mind, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to like consider more information and then adjust your opinion based on information that you've received. I think that's I think that's untrue, Livia. I think I think all social media sites are relatively the same amount of toxic. The ones, the ones you review, the ones you view as more toxic are likely because you just use those ones more. Like, my instinct to that person that's saying like, hey, what changed your mind is to be like, well, I don't know, did you read my tweet? Which is, which is rude. So instead of responding to them in a rude way, I'll just block them and move on. And if I block them, I won't feel incentivized to be rude to them again in the future because they won't be able to type to me. That's true. My sentence, my tweet did have a line break in it, which makes it difficult to parse. Hopefully we draw an untapped land next turn so we can go Colossus into play a one drop, make a two-two right away. So another thing you need to learn to do cooldown max that will make you happier is don't spend time speculating about what you think people meant. Instead, just read what they wrote and take it, take it at face value. If you sit there and play endless guessing games trying to figure out what people meant, you're just always going to be guessing. Maybe I'm not supposed to play this out this turn. It might be it might be that I'm supposed to just Crypt Breaker draw a card here just because they're at such a high life total. We're not going to be able to pressure them out of this game. But Jeff, what about sarcasm? If you don't indicate you are being sarcastic in text on medias, it's not your fault. It's your fault when people take you seriously and treat you accordingly. Uro is so good. In, in general, erring on the side of not being sarcastic online is, is often ideal. Yeah, yeah, I think I messed up with my sequencing here. They have a sweeper. We're going to be in a lot of trouble. Do I want to hit them for two or would I rather draw a card? I think I'd rather draw a card. I 
Nah, let's just smack him. Next turn, we're gonna Driven plus Despair and draw a whole bunch. A diba 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 that's all foot it's wise to assume people can deduce the tone of your voice through text-based communication he said sarcastically yeah and so and what happens what happens as someone who interacts or uses a lot of social media and has plenty of people that don't like him something that happens a lot in text-based communication is people attach whatever tone they want to you what your message is based on their feelings about you. So someone that likes you is less likely to attach hostile or rude or whatever else that's negative to a message that you posted and people who don't like you are going to in are going to just assume that you meant something that you didn't actually say. And one of the one of the tough things is is I definitely created a worse time for myself even even up to very recently because like sitting there when people are assuming the worst in you you can't really engage and change their minds and when you sit there and engage with them often you end up looking worse for sitting there and engaging with them so you just shouldn't engage Yes, yeah. I'm I'm not yelling. This is just my voice. Not engaging is incredibly difficult. It feels like you're losing when you're not getting the last word in. But the reality is, you're actually losing if you are getting the last word in. You don't you don't win by giving them more of your time. All right, so here's a thought. I shocked that in because I thought I was going to Driven Despair here. But do I actually just Crypt Breaker draw a card? They're at 21. I think I'm supposed to Crypt Breaker draw a card. Yeah, so like I took, I took two points of damage I didn't have to take here. That's a mistake to shock this in. We actually haven't played against Inverter at all this league. We played against two Heliod Ballista decks, and we played against Inverter twice last league. But this is the third match of this league, and we haven't hit it yet. They could think we have a three mana removal spell, yeah. They stack the queue on the back end and put all the inverter decks together. Something like that. Something like that. They're speculating on the reason I shocked in the land. <laughs> because I'm because I'm dumb is the conclusion to that one.
took had a line in my head didn't adjust my line when i drew the card Nope. Was it an accidental 300 IQ play or an accidental 30 IQ play? Asking the real questions. All right, they have fatal push here. Doesn't look like it. Huh? I think I just, uh, I think I just empty their hand here, right? Now, the, the problem with emptying their hand is they get to Uro next turn. It could, it could be right to just draw three here and then play Colossus out. What do we think of that? I kind of like draw three, play Colossus out. I feel like there's a good chance that letting them cast... Uro next turn is just better than the cards in their hand. Oh, I'm so dumb they don't have Menace. Oh, fuck. <sighs> so it's still okay. It's not as good as it should have been. Didn't have menace, right? Back half gives menace, front half gives trample. Oh, I guess casting thought sees lets them uro because they get to traverse now and then uro. But if they traverse and then uro, they are like the Emercole's a dead card. They're pretty far off Emrakul. They only have five card types. They only have five lands in place. So they're still two lands off. If we draw, like, another zombie next turn, we get to, like, Colossus as a 4-4, play a zombie, make a token. So, like, if we draw, like, a one or two mana zombie next turn, I think we could be in an okay spot even through this Uro or whatever this Traverse is going to get. It's going to be a close game, though. No, they, have, they have Breeding Pool in their hand, Fearburger. Oh, yeah, I guess I should have assumed they had that. We're pretty dead. All right, one and two. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like after playing that and seeing the awkwardness of this card in the face of Uro, I kind of feel like this is probably not worth the splash. Like, if this card is awkward in, like, the style of matchup where it should really excel while also being bad against the really aggressive decks, I feel like it's probably just not worth the slots and not worth making the mana kind of medium. All 
We're on the draw, right? I'm gonna bottom a land on the draw. Lizardio! Coming in hot with the 22nd month. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I think we want to lead on the pressure rather than the thought sees here against turn one island. But I'm checking out some of their options over there. Yeah, quick, quick, concise sub notifications are ideal. Enough, enough to acknowledge them. <sighs> um. Well, we don't really know how Bernie's doing, right? We don't have data. We have some some polls, I guess, but polls aren't one hundred percent accurate. This is a good pickup. I have Jace Jace Passage. <sighs> Losing the Death Baron here makes it a lot harder to kill their Wielder of Mysteries. Oh, sure. That's a good draw to you. Let's me clear out their blockers and add more pressure. Well, from my from my understanding, the DNC isn't the one that's in control of the app. So I think it's probably best to err on the side of not conspiracy theories for the time being. Those can be actively harmful. Bernie's numbers were only based on 40%. Yeah, it's hard to know that those are representative then. We're in an okay spot here. If we don't just get like randomly twinned, we're, we're doing all right. I'd like to attack you with everything, please. Let's have a tricky dick. Take him out back and drown him in the lock, yep. And then, because of the number of cards in their graveyard, it's unlikely that we die next turn. However, our opponent could, could dig through time and end of turn, and then we lose next turn. All right, they didn't dig. Hopefully that means they're dead. It might have been right to hold the reaver back in case of like a ritualist up there. Yeah, I saw I saw those numbers, Shine. You can feel free to link it for other folks, but I saw those. Thanks for the seven months, Bullmaster. Um so trophies great here. It's driven to despair good. Making them discard cards is probably fine. I think this is not a Diagraph Colossus matchup. I think I just want to beat them down ASAP. I think I'm just going to swap the Colossus for the trophies. Uh, this is our third time playing against Inverter in nine matches. I don't think I want Duress here. We talked about this a little bit earlier. The thing that makes me happiest about those numbers that were posted is the fact that Joe Biden is behind the other centrist candidates. Obviously, obviously I would love for Bernie to win or a progressive, but like, please don't make me vote for Joe Biden. Status, status quo Joe.
Yeah, I agree, Ninja Killer. I agree. I think I lead on this in case they have like a sensor. Biden's strategy of telling people to vote for other candidates is working out. <laughs> God bless. A lot of Warren supporters apparently swung to Klobuchar instead of Sanders when she wasn't viable enough. That, that's interesting. So does that mean there's a lot of people who are just picking Warren because it can't be policy-based, right? Because like Sanders is closest to Warren in terms of policy. That's so weird. What do we jam here now? Might just be relentless in. I feel like they have a removal spell. So I think I'm just going to play this rather than a Lord. Your young voter, how do you get educated? I'd recommend pulling up the home pages of the different candidates that you think you might be interested in. Go, go directly to the source. Kali Das. My understanding of the Iowa caucus is that nobody is voting based on policy. <laughs> oh. Huh? Am I supposed to bring an ultimate price to deal with this Kalitas? I have Fatal Push and Trophies in. Net decking in politics is okay, ain't that? Those are words to live by. I think a lot of the hate the DNC gets is largely unwarranted. Like, the rules for the primary in 2016 sucked, but everybody knew those rules going in. So, like, it's not like they changed to the rules midway, right, from my understanding. So you could say you didn't like the rules, but, like, they didn't do anything that was outside of them. And then those rules got changed when people expressed that they were unhappy with them. Yeah, and then there's other people conflating the DNC with the caucuses, which is completely irrelevant because they they didn't run the caucuses. So again, don't don't be a typical person. Don't just like spread clickbait titles. Have have information. Share based on actual information. A hey, Volpert, thanks for the 17 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Okay, I mean, if there was a card that could get us back in this game, that's probably it, huh? We get to draw two, and we get to take their two cards out of their hand. So, like, if we can find an Assassin's Trophy, we're going to put them to empty-handed here. Thanks for the 14 months. Ocho, I appreciate that. Welcome back. So, we draw two, they discard two. Well, Crypt Breaker is not a removal spell, but it is double inverter, yep. But it is a thing that could draw us into removal spells, potentially.
Dig through time is a good pickup. Well, our Legion has ended. So, Crypt Breaker into Reaver. Oh, I should have Crypt Breaker seconded here in case they have a Fatal Push as their last card. Oh, you know what? I should have... I should have tapped this to draw a card and left the token up to block Kalitas. Is what I should have done there. Small mistake. Yeah, we can't we can't really beat a removal spell anyways though, Tom. It's whatever. Rather get my two points of damage in. Yep. So their deck is push, push, legions, and dig. Bum it. I mean like, it's hard to say it's hard to complain about top decks too much, like after they cast dig through time, right? Like. They cast, they cast a dig through time chat. They're going to find the cards they need. In fact, that, the fact that inverter is just a 6-6 six -six is so brutal. That's such a... Such a chunky, chunky dork to kill so quickly. Yeah, I mean, that's a stretch, third degree. So, like, I agree that the Electoral College needs to go, but saying the Electoral College was created by the GOP is just, like, patently untrue. The system that's been in place for a long time. It's, it's okay to point out things that, like, suck and should change, but, like, stick to the facts. Okay, so we've mulliganed to five here, but our five is pretty reasonable. You have to go turn one, Crypt Breaker, turn two, Reaver, draw a card, and maybe unmulligan a little bit. But it went to six. We get fatal pushed or thought seized here. We're not going to be very happy. Hopefully they just have an opt. I mean, getting rid of the electoral college solves, solves getting rid of the winner take all system, Pino. Right, we have a fatal push to cut through that. I'm not sure exactly how much I want to draw and how much I want to pressure them. Like three attacks, not a ton here. It doesn't actually do that though, Obscene Sanity. I'm tired of that FUD, that FUD answer. The Electoral College does not ensure that anybody campaigns anywhere specifically. The Electoral College ensures that people campaign in swing states. Again, stick to the facts. 
You're what defending the Electoral College is defending the idea that we should prioritize swing states as opposed to prioritizing places where people live. What you're what you're actually saying is you don't like the idea of people having to campaign where people actually live. That's that's what you're saying. And think about that. Think about how silly that is. There will, there will always, always be places that are more profitable to campaign in than others. It's just right now, they're random swing states instead of places where people actually live. So not only was it created for to try and give ideas to stuff to more rural areas, but like at a time when the Electoral College was created, we lived in a far less global economy. And, and that doesn't even begin to get into the fact that like places already have disproportionate representation in the Senate. They don't also need disproportionate representation in the presidency. All right, so I can't really attack into a one through anyway, so might as well just uh, just draw a card. This has menace, so we'll get to smack them through the one three. They have three cards in their hand, one of which is a fetid pool. We're in an okay spot here, but we're definitely in danger of just getting punked out by twin. Kali Toss is also real good. The upside here compared to last game is this game I've got a bunch of Crypt Breakers. So I can go ahead and potentially draw into a way to kill their thing, which would be nice. Keebler Drow, thanks for the brand new Prime Sport. I appreciate that. Welcome to Hooglandia. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. Now, the tough part is tapping all of those means Kalidus gets to smack me. That Cletus gains them life too, so like. I've got probably one more turn to draw a removal spell. I don't actually have that many removal spells for Kalitas. We're mostly drawing to Assassin's Trophy. Well, I guess I have Dark Salvation too. Wow, they're just pumping the brakes. Them pumping the brakes is really good for us. We hit a lord can we just race maybe so i'm gonna play one of these lands out but the other one's gonna turn into a 2-2 with this crypt breaker yeah yeah this can this can pay two and discard a thing to make a 2-2 two -two zombie so we got that going for us at least they're drowning our actual thought seas. they must have a combo piece as their last card in hand huh Or Dig Through Time was their last card. That makes sense, too. It's basically a combo. It's probably better than a combo piece because it's like a combo piece plus something else is the, is the likely outcome. Or both combo pieces, yeah. All right, is this an inverter? Okay, so 
Thoughtseize is a live draw now as well. So both so both Kappa pieces it is, yep. Is Thoughtseize a live draw? If I have enough blockers, it's live. There's the fatal push we really wanted. Driven to despair is enough if we hit it if we hit it fast enough. It is is officially the bad guy, K Smith. Had a lot of a lot of top eight finishes over the last weekend. Am I driven to despair? That definitely getting there. I think I'm gonna be done with this one. Yeah, yeah let's play one more. If we win, if we win the next one, I get five bucks back. We're running, we're running low on moto points. Budget burrito matchup. If we win this match, we get five dollars back. If we lose this match, we've spewed a full ten. Something, something. Magic Online's not gambling. That's that's quite possibly the funniest part of the MPL contracts. The MPL contracts list gambling as something that shouldn't be associated with the Magic brand, which is just like really funny. Turbo Banana, thanks for the five months. Aaron, thank you for the 13 months. Which, you know, honestly, thinking about it, that's probably the number one reason why they don't work with me out of all the other things. I wonder, come to think, I don't think I recall any of the other big personalities talking about how the game's effectively gambling and, like, how Magic Online's effectively gambling. And I'm sure, I'm sure that... I'm sure that's a connotation they don't want associated with their brand. Like, very obviously they don't want it associated, right? Like, it's explicitly listed. Oh, it's it's certainly gambling. Magic Magic the Gathering is the original loot boxes, chat. Other, other games might have perfected them. We invented them. Looks like Just Guy Ascendancy Combo. back into you right I was born in loot boxes raised with them yep all right so next turn I get to driven to despair and dump three cards out of their hand we could still die next turn so we shouldn't I don't think we're in danger of dying this turn but next turn, we could definitely die. Oh, wait, that made them a mana. Huh? Could we die this turn? Maybe. So we're going to put them down to one card in hand. 
which means they need to have their land spell and draw a spell that lets them untap and get going from there. So low probability of dying next turn. Not 0%, but very low. Everybody clench. So we draw two, they discard two. Kill me! Oh no, oh no! We just told everybody to clench and then said kill me. This format really has become modern. Oh no. They binned Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Things are, things are not looking good for our hero, chat. I mean, to be fair, Sultai, Sultai Delirium won one of the PTs. The archetype's very reasonable. It's a mid-range control deck. Would holding up push be viable there? No, I don't think so, because they could just respond to push with an instant to untap their thing. I think, I think we're more likely to win taking two of the three cards out of their hand than we are by holding up Fatal Push, would be my conjecture. Not if you enjoy Mono Red, Bill Nye. Get them, get them dollar reduce. The art for Ascendancy is very silly. Just like the Motliest crew. Are they dead? Like they don't have any cards left in their hand, right? Okay. Opponent took a bunch of game actions and then conceded. Sounds about right. Trophy in. Natural Slate in. Duress in. Fatal Push out. Dark Salvation out. Honestly, Diagraph Colossus is probably worse than Scavenging Ooze. Because Scooze can, like, attack their graveyard a little bit for their delve stuff. Imagine how bad your life must be. To be like watching a magic stream and feel the need to DM someone over their choice to play mono red. Yeah, that's, that's not a healthy amount of sodium if you're out there watching. Leave Bill Nye alone. Get some, stop it, get some help. Your, doc, your doctor is concerned about your sodium intake. Huh? I think it's right to lead on this still. Oh yeah. Three three botanical sanctums definitely taking that paradise trade. Hey Cooler, thank you for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Ugh, discard spells. The good news is Crypt Breaker gives us something to do with these extra lands down the line too, which is great. So opponent's hand right now is Botanical Sanctum, Retraction Helix, Mox Amber. Studies have come out suggesting that huge public initiative for the general public to stop eating salt in their diets caused a drastic decrease in iodine deficiencies. Like most things, good in moderation is probably the goal.
You don't have to. You don't have to cut. Cut zero. You don't have to intake zero salt. But you know, less than less than the amount. Less than the amount that caused you to DM someone over playing mono red is probably healthy. Mono red moderation, yeah. So this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and eat the JAC out of their bin here because they're dead in two attacks regardless. So I don't need to get an extra point of damage here. I just want to keep their graveyard small to make a potential dig through time they could draw worse. Also, playing any other threat out is bad should this Witching Weld or this Unbridled Growth draw them into like an Anger of the Gods or a Deafening Clarion. They're definitely cards that their archetype can play. I get a lot of looks here. I think it's right to attack them that turn, though, rather than drawing more cards. It's like putting them on a two-turn clock seems ideal. Mm, it's not a two-turn clock through a blocker. Huh? So they block a 2-2. Two, two. They take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... So even if I play Reaver, I'm still short. Iowa plans to re release results by 4 p.m. Central today. Good to know. Holding holding these back so I can hold up scavenging use activations and play around a sweeper a little bit. I'm going to eat these now. Just keep their graveyard as small as possible in the event that dig through time comes up. Are there other states that use caucuses though? Nevada does, okay. All right, let's find out if we're dead. Listen, chat, do you have any idea how hard it is to write test cases? If writing test cases for software was easy, Wizards of the Coast would produce software that worked. So, they retractioned Helixed this. So, Helix plus this plus Mox Amber means that they have an unlimited number of scries, right? So our opponent has, um, well, I don't know. I'm like trying to put together how they kill us from here. How do, how do we die from this position? I'm not sure that we do. Uh, because I left Taco Bell garbage in my can last night and it smelled really bad. That's why my can's in the hallway. Dummy. I know you said you didn't want fries, but they gave me two orders of fries and also dumped another hundred fries in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> so... Hear that chat? She's forcing fries on me. I had to, I have to eat the fries. It's not my decision. She's made it for me. Is there anything else I can do for you, honey? Nope.
Oh, uh, okay. So this is this is the win condition. So we saw alter the brood. So now this says whenever the permanent enters the battlefield under their under their control. Now they loop it with Mox Amber, and every time Mox Amber hits, we mill one. So that's their that's their win con. All right, uh, easy mulligan here. This hand's not amazing, but it's definitely a keep. Needs some more. It has a lot of disruption. It needs some more pressure. Hey, thanks for the 20 months, Eternal Witness. Welcome back. One drop creatures a great draw here. It means I get to draw draw two next turn with driven. Which is nice. Man, Thoughtseize is such a tilting card. Just like, Thoughtseize them, see literal blanks. They draw Ascendancy into Paradise Druid. Like, good golly. You don't die to cards you know about. Listen, as someone who, who has cast many thought seasons and promptly conceded, that is patently not true. All right, so they have one card left in hand. 
I have trophy. I think I'm casting Relentless Dead and then I'm just attacking for two here. I'm going to hold trophy up. Maybe I'm just supposed to trophy the Emery. Because Emery, Emery lets them get value off this Witching Well over and over again. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to kill this. Very, very close. All right, they're empty handed. Are we dead? Survey says. Hey, we got our $5 back. So. I feel like overall the green splash didn't really feel worthwhile. Um, I think the core of being a black aggressive deck with like eight three mana lords and thought sees fatal push dark salvation is super reasonable in this format. Crypt breaker draws a lot of cards. So I think this archetype as a whole is fine. Mono Black Zombie's been up on my website for a while in the Pioneer section, but I don't really feel like the green splash was, like, worth the awkwardness it added in some of those matchups. Like, obviously, Trophy was useful in that very last one, but I think we also would have been better off in other places in that league if we just had more swamps or had more lands that came into play untapped, so... I think overall, the green splash was a bit of a miss for me. Maybe if we had, like, another painless land that came into play untapped all the time, it would be fine. But, like, Woodland Cemetery, Castle, and Mutavault, all of these together, just ended up giving us just too many hands where we just had, like, two or three tap lands to start. It slowed our aggressive deck down too much too consistently. All right. I'm going to go ahead and hit a quick ad roll while I run to the restroom and then get set up for this next deck. When we get back... We are going to have our second time playing through some blue-black fraying sanity traumatized kind of combo mill control. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.